Hey, what's up guys? My name is Alex and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Node.js and MySQL in conjunction with one another. To do that, we're going to use this open source project called Node MySQL. In fact, I think it's actually called MySQL because when you go to install it via NPM, which we'll do now, we type NPM install MySQL. Once this is installed, I'm going to create a new file called insert.js where I'll show you how to insert records into the database. I'll also create a file called select.js where I'll later show you how to retrieve those records back again. All this code is going to be available on GitHub, so check the description if you'd rather just look at the code. I'm going to go into insert.js and I'm going to add a reference to MySQL using require. And then I'm going to create a variable called connection where I will create a connection. To do that, simply use the create connection function and pass to it some options, which is takes the form of a JavaScript object. In this case, I'm going to tell MySQL that the host is localhost, that the user is root, my password is password. Of course, that's simply for demonstration purposes. And the database we're going to interface with is going to be called articles. Creating a connection and actually connecting is a little bit different. So we'll say connection.connect. If I return to the terminal and I run this, you'll see that we get an error. It tells us unknown database articles. That is because I'm yet to create the database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my SQL in the terminal. I'm going to type create database articles. And now when I run this, we don't get an error. So to insert a record is actually pretty straightforward. I'm going to create a JavaScript object called article. And I'm going to do it like this because it's fairly typical that the data you're going to receive to store in the database is going to take the same format. Although we haven't actually got a table yet. So I'm going to create a new file here called schema.sql. And whilst I don't actually really need to use this from the project, I'm going to paste it here so it'll be available to you guys when you look at the source code later. And I'll simply just paste this in here. In fact, firstly, I need to say use articles. Oops, I've closed that on my SQL, great. So I'll say use articles database changed and then I'll paste in this query and now when I say show tables you'll see that inside of the articles database we have a table called articles. The table is very oversimplified. I appreciate in a real system you'd for example want to break out the author into a different table and so on but for demonstration's sake this is plentiful. Anyway what we want to do is create a property for this object that maps each column. We don't need to worry about the ID because we use the auto increment attribute, which basically says every time you insert a record, automatically generate an ID. So author, for author, we'll just say that I'm the author. For the title, we'll say, uh, I don't know, no tutorial. And for the body, which is kind of the meat of the article, we'll just say foobar. I'm not going to type anything interesting out. To insert this into the database, we simply type connection.query. So we call the query method and pass to it some SQL. We'll say insert into articles set question mark. Question mark is a special symbol when working with the MySQL library. It's essentially a placeholder. So instead of manually mapping every column and its values, we use a placeholder and then pass to the same query method, the article that we want to insert. This method is asynchronous, so we're going to pass a callback that takes an error and a result. Let me remove the uh, folder explorer just so you can see the code a bit better. Great. Now, let me show you something. If we assign to a variable called query the result of this operation, we can actually access the generated SQL. So if I return to the command line and I run this, 
you'll see that it prints out the SQL that it generated. So at the start, it looks fairly familiar. We say insert into article set, but in place of the question mark, it's replaced the question mark with the column name, author, and the value delimited by commas for every single column that we defined in the article object. This is really nice because it makes our query very terse and it also inherently escapes the values preventing against SQL injection. It's possible that you might, for example, have a typo or your database isn't configured properly and an error will occur. That's why we have this error property. For example, if I mistakenly added two R's to author in a typo and I tried to include another tutorial, for example, for working with Git, and I run the same script, it will still print the SQL, but there was an error and there was really no way of us knowing what happened. That's why it's really highly recommended that every time you execute a query, you check if there was an error, and if there was, print it to the console and cease execution. If there was no error, what we'll do is we'll print out the results variable. The result variable, which we'll see, or really argument, that we'll see in a second, holds values like how many rows were affected, what the generated ID was, and so on. I'll show you that in a second, but first, if I run the same script again, you'll see that we get an actual descriptive error now. Instead of it failing silently, we see, ah, unknown column, author. So I know that to fix this, I have to remove that superfluous R. And when I run this again, this time we inserted a second record into the database, git tutorial, and this is our result. We have a count of affected rows. Well, we inserted one article, which resulted in one row being created. So the number of rows affected was one. We also get this insert ID. We didn't specify the ID. Because we had this auto increment attribute, MySQL generated it and it gives it back to us in the form of this result object. This is important when you're working with multiple tables and you want to have a foreign key that references another column. If I return to the other terminal window and I, for example, say select everything from articles, you'll see that both articles have been inserted correctly. And of course, the IDs are one and two, they incremented automatically. That's great. What if you want to retrieve some data? So I'll copy and paste this and I will go to uh, select.js, I think I called it. Great. So now when you're looking at this code later on, you can look at how to insert data and now how to query data. Querying data is pretty easy as well. Use the same method query, and then use similarly a SQL expression like select everything from articles. This time you don't have to pass an argument aside from the callback because you don't use a placeholder, but the signature is very similar. We get a result back. And then I'll print to the console result. I really highly recommend you have some error handling here, but I'll be brief so I won't do it. And now when I run, instead of running the insert script, I'll run select.js. And as you can see, it's executed that query and it's retrieved both records from the database. It's really simple. I wanna spend a little bit of time talking about SQL injections because what I'm showing you here is very contrived. It's not very often that you would hard code your article like this. You'd probably get it straight from the user via a HTTP request, either in the request body as JSON or via a query string parameter. One common example is you show a list of every article, but then to access a specific article, you'll go to you know yourwebsite.com forward slash articles where the ID is equal to one. So let's pretend we get the ID from a request, from a query string, sorry. And so what we might do is we might say, ah, from the articles where the ID is equal to ID. What we would expect to happen here is for this query to return the article with the ID one. If we run this, you'll see that that's actually the case. That's what we want. However, even though this query seems to work and it seems quite innocuous, it's actually very dangerous. Well, the query itself isn't dangerous, but it's very, very precarious. It's very easy to exploit. It's possible that the user might not be willing to enter the sensible value. You can't control what your user enters, but you can control what data you accept and how you handle it. So it's possible that the user might do something like this. They might put a semicolon and then say drop table articles. 
So imagine we take this from the query string. What's going to happen now? Let me show you. If I add a query variable again and I run this, you can see that what it's going to do is it's going to run this query, which is fairly normal. But because the user put this very malicious piece of SQL in the same argument, it's going to treat that as actual SQL and it will invoke it. SQL, MySQL will invoke this as a SQL expression and therefore delete the database. In this particular case, the database, or the tables rather, st the table articles still exists. That's because Node MySQL prevents you from executing multiple statements. However, if you go to the options and you say multiple statements is equal to true, and then run this, And now look at this, if I say show tables, there are no tables because it actually executed the second statement and deleted the database. It's possible that the user tries to effectively hack your website or at least cause a lot of havoc by executing a URL like this one or however else you're retrieving the data. The solution is actually very simple. You need to make sure that you surround every single argument you get from the user in a call to connection.escape. If I run the same query now, although I'll actually create the table again, even though it will be empty, the resulting SQL looks a bit different. As we're previously, if we look up a little bit, it's just a very normal SQL query. In this case, it actually surrounds everything the user gave us in quotations, effectively escaping it. This means that SQL is no longer going to treat this as a SQL expression. It's not going to invoke it and consequently delete your database. It's simply going to say, hmm, so find me an ID, find me, find me an article where the ID is equal to one colon drop table articles, which is never going to evaluate to true because ID is an integer. Which means that if we were to look at the results, rather than getting an error, we just get an empty result and the, the, the hacker would be effectively none the wiser. It'd be like, oh, my attack didn't work too bad, right? You don't have to use connection.escape when you use the placeholder because it does it automatically. In fact, in this case, you could have actually said where the ID is equal to placeholder and then to pass the ID like this. And the result will be very similar. As you can see, it automatically escaped the value without us having to do so manually. It's very important that you remember to escape the arguments the user gives you because they could drop the database. What MySQL does by default is it disallows you from executing multiple statements. This will reduce the scope of SQL injection tags. However, it st doesn't make you bulletproof. I highly recommend that you firstly check for errors to help yourself uh, maintain your sanity when you can't find out what's wrong. And secondly, to always, always, always escape values because when you own a database, when you maintain it, you're responsible for your users. And in this case, I simply deleted the database, but in others, it's possible to perform a SQL injection attack and find out information that exists in your table that you wouldn't otherwise expose, things like private information. Anyway, guys, there's been a little tiny primer on SQL injection and a more uh, beginner's tutorial on how to work with MySQL, with Node.js and Express, whatever framework you're using. Thank you for watching.